College of the Ozarks is known for numerous things. One of those is having excellent people come to speak. And one of those, which is going to be tomorrow, actually, Colonel Lee Ellis. Um, he is going to be there tomorrow speaking, so we're fortunate enough to have him here with us today on the line to talk with him a little bit about uh, you know, himself and, and uh, the message that he's going to have down at the College of the Ozarks tomorrow. Uh, thanks for being with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's interesting, and one of the things that you, you do talk about is and you go around to Fortune 500 companies and, and other organizations about leadership, and, and so much is about the mechanics of leadership, and and you take it from the angle of you know the fact that hey honor, I mean that's like the glue that's missing uh, in in so much when it comes to our leadership skills in this country. Oh yeah, that's true, and you know the thing that goes with honor is courage. And that's where I see the two going together, but also the missing ingredients today. It's uh, when faced with a difficult situation, difficult choice, where some people are not going to like the way you choose or whatever, uh, or maybe you make a mistake, then uh, instead of dealing with it, uh, so many people want to cover those up. And uh, that's not honorable, and it sure doesn't show courage. So that's a big part of my message uh, as I speak tomorrow. Now, you... you you teach about leadership, not just Fortune 500 companies, but, uh-huh. you know, when it comes to other organizations, nonprofits, education, military organizations sure. as well. Do you uh-huh. find that that that, that lack of, of honor and courage is, is more lacking in certain areas than others of, of these different industries that you talk with, or is it just such a widespread cultural lacking that it's infiltrated all areas? Well, I think it is definitely the latter. I think it has infiltrated all areas because it's just harder and harder to hold people accountable. And wherever you have a lack of accountability, you find that human nature just kind of goes downhill and honor goes by the wayside for a lot of people. Uh, So business, actually, we're seeing that business is becoming more and more honorable because there's accountability. Boards of directors are much more accountable, and they're holding companies and CEOs and C-level people much more accountable. But the government has got in their business with Sarbanes-Oxley, and there's a lot more accountability with that since uh, the problems we had about 10 years ago. And then with social media, uh, customers are holding uh, companies accountable. So there's just a lot of forces working on business to hold them accountable to do the right thing. We don't see that same thing, unfortunately, in many other areas of our country, uh, even in, you know, church and uh, government, certainly, uh, both areas where accountability is very slow in coming. And so I think there's just more temptation. Education even now has become an area that uh, accountability has been lacking. And we've had major problems, for instance, in the Atlanta school system where teachers were actually cheating on the test for the students. They were changing scores for the students to make the students look better so the teachers look better. So... You know, it's, it's widespread, uh, but it's not something we can't turn around. We are talking with uh, Colonel Ellis. He's going to be welcoming incoming students to College of the Ozarks tomorrow, a leadership expert and former uh, prisoner of war in Vietnam. I imagine that, you know, as you talk with some of these young people, uh, just how far removed they are. And they're as far removed, uh, I suppose, in some aspects to Vietnam as they are the Civil War. Oh, yeah. But they're very interested in the story. I've spoken to a lot of young people. I've spoken at the Air Force Academy and at West Point and colleges, uh, business schools throughout the country, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. They're all interested in the story because it is an interesting story. Uh, And that's a vehicle for them to understand a little bit more. For instance, uh, I talk about certain lessons uh, that I've used in my book. You know, know yourself. Well, that's very important. Uh, Guard your character. Stay positive, be resilient, uh, be courageous, and, you know, to do the right thing. So there are a number of really uh, basic letter lessons for the young people, and I think I'll be able to connect with them through the story and to help them see the importance of living, of uh, being, you know, living on purpose and being conscientious and conscious of what they're doing. Uh, you know, probably unless somebody has met and spoken with somebody like you, the most personal connection that people have 
to a, a POW from Vietnam is the story of John McCain because of his notoriety mm-hmm. in, in politics. Right. And, and there were numerous others that were there with him. And, and you were one of these prisoners of war for five years you were there. Uh, I, I imagine that it's almost difficult to explain what that experience was like because there are certain things that, you know, unless you've just been through them, uh, that there really isn't a. Dis- it's probably like trying to describe childbirth to a to a man. Exactly. You, you know, right. you, it, so it, there's got to be a bit of a challenge there. Yeah, it is. Uh, there is a, big, a pretty big challenge because, as you said, unless you've been through it, it's uh, it's hard to imagine it. But the reality is, and the wonderful thing about the human being is that we're capable of so much more than we ever think. You know, I lived in a six and a half by seven foot cell with three other you know, high ego, domina, uh, aviator oh. types, and we had no problems living together for nine months in a cell that was six and a half by seven feet. That's smaller than a walk-in closet or, you know, a small bathroom in a gas station. So, uh, you know, you can do a lot of things uh, when you have to. Our, our bathroom was a three-gallon bucket. Unfortunately, it had a lid. So it's amazing what uh, human beings, both mentally and physically, can do to survive and carry on. And actually... You know, in some ways, uh, we, we made it okay. It was very difficult. There was torture. There was fear a lot, uh, but we got through it. We worked together. We had great leadership, and I think we had really good training that prepared us for that also. What do you find in your life, in your background, uh, is something that connects most with people, be it young people or people that are looking for development in their own leadership skills that you've got from the past that, that connects with people the most or that resonates with them the most? Well, I grew up on a farm, uh, plowing mules and driving tractors. I'd always wanted to fly, so I'm just a normal person. And, uh, you know, I was a kind of an underachiever. And I don't mind, I mean, I'm not proud of it, but it's the reality. I was an underachiever, and I think uh, I was... I was gifted enough with my mom being a teacher that I absorbed a lot of information, so I was kind of lazy about schoolwork. Now, I worked hard on the farm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm just a regular guy thrown into that situation. Now, I did have a lot of training, and I had a a lot of motivation. You know, the military is not for everybody. It was good for me. Being a fighter pilot was uh, something I was passionate about and had always wanted to do. But beyond that, I think um, just the fact, you know, when I speak, I usually show a lot of pictures, uh, a lot of slides, almost no words on them, but just pictures, and they can see that I was a young guy once, mm. and just like they are, uh, and that, you know, these things happened, and then I got through it, and you're going to face difficult situations in life, and you're going to have to get through them, and being learning to be positive and to expect, uh, as Admiral Stockdale said, you confront the brutal realities of your current situation, but you never give up hope and never give up expectations for a good outcome. So being resilient, bouncing back, when you see other people have done it. You see, I learned all about leadership in those five and a half years as a POW from the leaders around me because I was a junior-ranking person and the youngest guy in the cell. Colonel Lee Ellis, uh, going to be the incoming or the speaker for incoming students tomorrow at the College of the Ozarks and uh, also author of Leading with Honor, which you can get information about at leadingwithhonor.com. Appreciate uh, you being with us, and uh, I think you'll enjoy tomorrow College of the Ozarks. It's a, it's a great great place to visit. Thank you so much, Nick. Enjoy being on your program, and you're right. I've already done my homework on College of the Ozarks, and they're an impressive organization. Without, without a doubt. Well, thank you so much, and enjoy your visit, all right? Thank you. Take care. All right, you do the same.